Hey, what's up you guys? It's Mike Bryant from the Snake Lab. I'm shooting this little intro after making the remainder of the video because I want to give you a little bit of a disclaimer. Uh, the video does run a little bit long. It's actually very long. And you'll have to deal with me saying um a whole lot. But if you can get through that, I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to bring up is that I think that the instances that are uh, referenced in this video, they're incredibly rare. Uh, I don't think that this should make anyone uh, untrusting of their breeders or their current snakes or anything like that. I think if you were having an issue with the sex of your snake, uh, that you would know already. So I just wanted to bring that up before the video. And without further ado, let's get to it. All right guys, some crazy stuff going on over here and I wanted to tell you about it. So some of you guys might remember back in 2017, uh, we put out a video about some not so super well endowed ball pythons. And uh, what you didn't get in that video was kind of the full story. So that's what this is about. Here is a super reduced clown. Really pretty. 1131 grams. This is like me back in the locker room in high school. Look at those tiny little fuckers. And this dude will not lock with anything. I don't know, he's got scent glands as big as a female and tiny little hemipenes. I almost wonder if he's not a hermaphrodite. But nothing, okay? So there's one example. All right, so here's the full story. What some of you guys know is that for the past year or so, uh, we've been taking care of some snakes for our friend Mike Kano of the newly founded Fabled Creations. Uh, Mike had to move facilities and so uh, we've been taking care of some of his snakes, incubating eggs for him and things like that while he gets settled into his new place and uh, is able to transition everything over. Now that clown, that really reduced clown that was featured in that video was a snake that belonged to Mike and it was sold to him in 2015 by a pretty well-known breeder um, as a female um, and I have no reason to believe that there were any sort of malicious intentions there at all um, but when Mike brought the snakes over uh, you know I did my typical due diligence and went around making feeding charts for everyone and sort of my process with that as I'm checking everyone over is that I just double sex everything. I, I just check the sexes and everything was going really good until I opened up the tub of, you know, arguably the one snake that Mike was most excited about pairing the following year. Uh, and that was that 2015 uh, female clown. He had kind of big plans for her and some double recessive stuff. And I pulled her tail back and I applied light pressure and pow, two little red hemipenes popped out and I felt sick. I didn't know how I was gonna tell him about it. I didn't know how I was gonna bring it up. Uh, and I actually have my friend John Abrams, uh, you might remember from a &R Pythons a couple years back, uh, uh, come over and just kind of check it out with me before I even told Mike. And uh, so then, uh, Show them. Okay. Uh, trying to get, get show them. Okay. So we'll just pop sex him, him or her, but to, uh, I'd say it's a he. Yeah, there's the hemi peens. Yeah. So does the female. I'll send this to Jerry. I figured we'll get something a little more interesting to look at than my sweaty face in this hot snake room. But, so at this point I was intrigued and my interest wasn't in the fact that Mike had been sold an incorrectly sex snake. That's not mind-blowingly uncommon. It was in why this 2015 male's hemipene development was similar to the development of some of our hatchlings from that year. Some of our 
younger hatchlings. And that got me wondering, was this guy a late bloomer? Was he genetically cursed? And could he ever viably breed with this sort of hemipene development if nothing changed? And a lot of us had conversations about this. Some of you almost certainly remember having conversations with me about this as we all kind of guessed and put forth our pet theories. And I remember in particular that Brian from Breaking Balls had experience with a similar situation where he purchased a very expensive ball python at the time who seemed to mature in body size and grow at a normal rate, but his hemipenes never did develop. And Brian ended up keeping him as a pet before eventually selling him to a friend. And so yeah, most of our conversations and theories were pretty lighthearted and joking. Um, there was some speculation about genital mutilation that was rumored to have occurred between 2010 and 14 on some expensive males, uh, but this never really seemed likely to me. I can't say that I know what genital mutilation looks like, but a close inspection of these hemipenes revealed exactly what you'd expect from a fully formed but tiny hemipene. Um, and I'm sure that some of you are at this time thinking, well, he was just wrong. Um, so maybe, maybe let's just take a look at that right now and uh, let's just cut and we'll show you some footage of actually uh, popping and probing the snake. Okay, so here we are in person. Little bit of sperm even coming out of that one. And I'm sure some of you guys are thinking, I am not entirely convinced that that was a hemipene. Uh, that snake needs to be probed to be sure. And so go ahead and do that too. All right, so hopefully at this point, we can all agree, uh, at least in reference to how the vast majority of us in this industry are taught to sex ball pythons, that that is uh, male genitalia. Um, so at this point, uh, you know, Mike decides he doesn't really need the animal. Uh, it's not gonna be that helpful to him in any future breeding projects. Uh, so he decided he was gonna sell him and me being interested in weird things, I wanted to buy him, but I kept talking myself out of it because I knew I'd never use him in a breeding project. It would just be to satisfy my curiosity of what was gonna happen with his sexual maturity. So the Snake Lab vended a show in Lexington, Kentucky, and I took Mike's animal along to the show to try and sell him for him. Um, the clown didn't sell, and our protocol after any show is that all animals that are taken to the show go into a mandatory quarantine for uh, a period of 90 days in our quarantine facility. But during this time, uh, you know, I'm typically keeping a really close eye on them, uh, watching for anything kind of atypical. And during this time period, the clown started to, for reasons I couldn't quite put my finger on at the time, seemed to come across as possessing sort of female attributes to me. And I know that that seems crazy because phenotypically males and female ball pythons shouldn't be distinguishable from one another, but something about the distribution of body mass in this snake had me really second guessing myself. Okay, so I probed the snake again. Uh, again, it probed eight scales deep on both sides. So I started thinking, you know, what are the odds that this breeder who's been in this for a pretty long time incorrectly sexes the snake? Um, you know, to me, it seems like it's got these female characteristics that I can't really put my finger on. And we've also got this severely lackluster hemipene development. 
Now, without getting too political, we know from many other species, humans included, that gender, at least biological gender, is probably better understood of as on terms of a continuum, rather than sort of this stark black and white male-female dichotomy. And especially during certain stages or phases of development where things like, um, you know, testes determining factor in humans or temperature in various lizards or uh, social constraints in certain types of fish or toxins with certain types of frogs, they can determine uh, and in some cases completely reverse gender. Um, and we also know that varying degrees of certain hormones and steroids can lead to the development of ambiguous genitalia. At this point, I bring this idea up to Mike that uh, maybe it's a hermaphrodite, and I offer to buy the snake on this hunch that, uh, you know, even though I've never heard of such a thing, maybe this snake has uh, going to be sexually viable as a female, uh, even though I'm pretty convinced that it would never be sexually viable as a male. Long story short, I didn't end up buying the animal. Um, Mike instead ended up selling it to some good friends of his uh, as sort of a gamble male. He had fully disclosed everything that we had found out. He told him, you know, it's probably really unlikely that he's ever going to breed, but if you want to take a chance on him, you give him a really, really good price on the snake. And uh, that was kind of the end of the story here, so I thought. So within a week, these people had very excitedly messaged Mike and told him that the snake had locked up with one of their males. And I kind of explained that, you know, just because two snakes lock up, it doesn't mean that one of them's a female. Uh, oftentimes, males will lock up with one another too, maybe in a display of dominance or maybe because they're just not that picky. Uh, but it does definitely happen. Um, and so I didn't take too much stake in that. Um, but as time went on, apparently the snake continued to swell until last week when I got this picture. And this picture. Now, luckily these folks were incredibly cool and they offered to sell Mike the snake back for what they would paid him for it. So she's here for this video today. Um, but it kind of goes to show you that sometimes in very, very rare instances, uh, determining the sex of ball pythons might be a little bit more complicated than the popping and probing uh, that we've kind of come to rely on. And another one of these instances, as fate would have it, is right here. So this is a presumed to be male, uh, lesser orange stream ball python. Um, and if you want to come over here, the clown, this snake, has very small hemipene development. Now, this animal is eleven hundred and seventy grams and at least. 2015. Now here we have a much younger male weighing Hemipene development should look like. And here 
we have a male less than a year old, 288 grams. with hemipene development very much like that of the 1100 gram lesser orange dream. All right guys, so for us at least, I think I'm gonna be pulling this male lesser orange dream down off the morph market until we can get an ultrasound into the lab and see what maybe is really going on here. And anyways, uh, I thought this was really kind of interesting and hopefully you guys got something meaningful out of it too. I'm sure that some of you are still kind of balking at this idea and I completely understand there are a lot of other possibilities. It's entirely possible that uh, maybe these are just inconveniently placed benign growths. Um, maybe somehow the vaginal canal, for lack of a better term, is averting in the same way that hemipenes avert. Um, maybe it's possible that ball pythons get genital warts. Uh, but I don't have any indication that this is the case. And at least to myself and several of my peers, this appears to be a sexually viable female um, with male hemipenes. Even if it is uh, one of these other explanations, it's still cause to remind ourselves that, uh, you know, the, the appearance of something resembling a hemipene might not be the be all end all in some fringe cases. Um, it's important that in instances where the hemipene development uh, seems to be uh, just not really lining up with the age and size of the snake, uh, or times where you get this uh, kind of ambiguous uh, display of hemipenes as a hatchling. Um, maybe those are instances where uh, might not rule out the possibility of using something like an ultrasound to 100% determine what's going on with that snake. All right, guys, I want to clarify again that I do not think that this is some sort of prolific problem that's going on in the ball python industry or anything like that. I think that these cases are incredibly rare. Now I have spoken with several other breeders over the past couple of months that have had and seen uh, things like this. The common themes are that when these snakes are born, uh, at least in all the cases that I know of, there's an inability to avert the hemipenes right out of the egg. You know, most, most hatchlings you can at least pop them and get the hemipenes to come out. These you're seeing more of like two little red dots, uh, might almost even look like veining or something, right? And, and so the, the hemipene development is stunted from birth. Um, I also cannot stress enough that if you do, by some rare fringe chance, have a snake that has this micropene disorder, right? That does not in any way necessitate that that snake is a true hermaphrodite, meaning that uh, you know both genders, uh, sex organs are functional, or maybe even that either one is functional. It just means that something went wrong in the development of that um, snake. The two are not causally linked. Um, but anyway guys, I just thought that this was really interesting. And so, I don't know, I hope you guys did too, and let me know your thoughts in the comments, and shoot me a message if you have any questions, and uh, buy some snakes from the snake lab.